Back in the early 2000s, theme parks around the world were all competing for the biggest and baddest coaster records, and by far the most sought after record was the tallest coaster in the world. This spawned monstrosities like Magnum XL 200, Millennium Force, and Steel Dragon 2000. But one coaster literally rose above the rest to take the tallest record in spectacular fashion, creating the new 400 foot mark and creating an entirely new classification for coasters, the Strata. The new champion of the height and speed record was none other than Top Thrill Dragster until Six Flags copied it with King Ka. But Top Thrill Dragster was one of the most revolutionary coasters when it was built, and remained one of the most popular rides in the park decades after it was built. That was until the tragic accident last year. Most of you probably know what I'm talking about, but if you haven't heard, I'll give you a quick summary here. If you know Top Thrill Dragster, then you know the ride layout is relatively simple. It's launched up, then it comes back down to the station. Simple enough. However, when the train was coming back to the station in August of 2021, a piece of that green train flew off and hit a woman in line. This is the metal piece in question. It's it's a disc kind of object that was meant to signal to the sensors when the ride passes through a sensor. Now, if you don't know where the queue is, it's right here. Right by the launch tracks and the brakes of the ride, meaning that the woman who got hit got hit at point blank range. On a side note, the ride also hits 120 miles per hour. 120, 120 miles, miles per hour. hour at point blank range. It's honestly a miracle that this woman survived and my deepest condolences go out to her family and her, of course. Now, if I were her, I would want this ride to be torn down and never seen again. Imagine hearing the ride that hospitalized you is still operating with hundreds of people riding it every day. Hundreds of people standing in the same spot in line you were every single day. I wouldn't have it. And I think Cedar Point recognized this and made the right decision in closing it and keeping it closed, even though it's one of the most popular rides of the park and one of the main reasons people go to the park. But now that the aftermath of the accident is basically over with, the woman has recovered, and at least I think the legal action is finished, the fate of the ride is still up in the air. So that's exactly what we're going to talk about in this video. I'm going to try and answer what exactly is going on with Top Thrill Dragster. Before I mentioned that Cedar Point closed Dragster, but that's not exactly permanent. On their official YouTube channel, they posted that they would be re imagining Top Thrill Dragster for the 2024 season. And I don't think this is going to be a small change either. In their words, it's going to be a new formula for thrills. That doesn't sound like fixing the ride and reopening it. That sounds like changing something about it. Now, people have speculated what that change will be for a while, but today I'm going to give you my official prediction for what it is. Can I get a drum roll, please? Nothing. That's right, I don't think this ride will be changed in any way beyond just being fixed. I don't think we're gonna get a spike, I don't think we're gonna get extended layout or an inversion or any other bullshit that people have been saying. The whole theory that Secret Point is gonna add to this ride is completely ridiculous. I know some people are saying that they need to add something new to market it as a new ride and kind of disconnect it from the accident, but honestly, a simple name change will do that. There's not much this park can do to disassociate it from its many accidents in the past and adding new elements wouldn't really trick anyone. It would just cost millions of dollars and that is really not worth it for a 20 year old ride there will however be one change and that will be the change of manufacturer cedar fair isn't going to work with intamin for a plethora of reasons and at the forefront is this very top throw dragster accident so who will they go with instead it's actually a little surprising it's not bnm it's not mock it's zamperla of all companies now yeah i know that may sound crazy but trust me it'll make sense first of all even though cedar fair has a good relationship with those two companies that i mentioned before they are also incredibly expensive like probably the two most expensive manufacturers out there. Even though going with either of them would probably fix the reliability and capacity problems, they're just simply not in the budget post-COVID. Cedar Fair hasn't built a large-scale B&M since the pandemic, and I don't think this Frankenstein mega project will be the first. Now, here's the thing. I'm not like 100% sure why everyone is saying Zamperla. They kind of just are. Other YouTubers are saying they have quote-unquote inside sources telling them, but really for me, it's just speculation. I'm going to go with the common consensus of Zamperla for the sake of the video, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was completely cap. But it does make sense that they would go with Samperla. They just worked with them at Cedar Point for their Wild Mouse Coaster, and even though it was a much smaller project than Dragster, it's a smaller way for Cedar Fair to see if Samperla can really handle larger scale coasters. Samperla is cheaper and much less controversial than Intamin, who Cedar Fair has pretty much cut ties with completely. It actually shows how much Cedar Fair doesn't like Intamin, because they are willing to jump through hoops of fire to finesse Zamperla to fix this. They're willing to do it just to give Intamin the middle finger. Like, they're gonna have to install a new control system, new trains, and I'm sure they'll have to at least adjust the sensors to accommodate for the new trains. It's just a lot of extra work they're doing to Frankenstein this ride, but they're going to finally get it open again and it'll be worth it. I will say though, when they do finally open it, it's not going to be the same top tilt dragster. First of all, the launch will definitely not be the same. If I had to put money on it, I would say it's just going to be a regular old LSM launch. It's going to be really long and it's not going to be as powerful. Also, I don't really know Zamperla restraints that well, but I can guarantee you it's not going to be as free as the Intamin T-Bars. So will the ride be slower and the restraints be worse? Yeah. Is there anything good that we'll gain. 
Well, not really. The only change I could possibly think that could improve the ride would be better capacity and on-ride audio with the new trains, but even that, I don't know if they're keeping the dragster theme. If they did some rumblings of the engine and the launch and screeching of the tires if you hit the brakes, that would be really cool, but again, on-ride audio is kind of a stretch. I don't know if Zamperla is going to go that far. And other than that, I really think we just get a downgraded version of the ride. We're not getting a new speed record, we're not getting a vertical spike, we're not getting an inversion, we're not getting extended layout, they're not making it taller, we're not getting one of those launches on a hill, we're not even going to see the hill go to the brakes like on King the Ka. We're literally just getting the exact same version of Dragster, but worse. I do want to see though what people think of this as opposed to Ka now, because before the common consensus was always Dragster over Ka, because it was smoother and freer, but with it not being freer and having a significantly worse launch, I don't know if smoothness can really carry the ride over the world's tallest coaster. Also, I have no idea what they're going to do to retheme this. The Dragster theme just worked really well, and I don't know what they could do to fit this red and white color scheme. I don't think they're going to repaint it, because then we would probably see them painting it right now, but at the same time, they really can't keep the Dragster theme. The accent is just too well known. It's a shame because the lights and the bleachers and the flags all made for a really cool spectacle for the ride, but they have to do what they have to do. Anyways, I know this was a quick one, but I kind of just wanted to touch on this before they made any official announcements, but my official prediction is that Zamperla will swoop in with new trains and a new LSM launch that is more reliable and not accident prone. They'll rename and retheme the ride to just something else, but I have no idea what that could be. I guess we'll just have to wait and see next year. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.